What it do, what it do, what it do, what it do, what it do. Back at you with another one. So, today, I want y'all to hear the whole little situation. Y'all remember the situation with uh, Stephen A. and Jalen Brown when Stephen A. had reported that his sources told him that Jalen wasn't marketable and that he was arrogant, blase, spleet. So, Jalen and uh, Stephen A. didn't have a sit down. To, you know, try to clear the air on, you know, what's going on and the source and all of that. So, I'm going to let y'all hear their conversation and I'm going to be back with y'all in a minute. What was it like for you watching Jason Tatum, Derek White, Drew Holiday come home with a gold medal on the team you felt you should have been on? It was great. Honestly, it was, it was awesome. Like, I was super happy for those guys. Um, it's a great honor to be able to represent your country. Um, so I was elated, you know, I was having a great summer mm -hmm. and that's what uh, I wanted to, uh, elaborate to the, to the unnamed source is that mm -hmm. like, man, like, man, I had a blast. Like I was traveling the world, enjoying myself, watching those guys do their thing. And that only makes our team have more union. You know, those three mm -hmm. guys being able to spend more time together, mm -hmm. you know, get to play with some of the greatest players in the world. Um, to be able to be around that union of KD, Steph Curry, and LeBron James, which was like, in this era of basketball, is like one of the best things you could watch. Man, it was it was great. I watched every game. I supported it with, with no bias. Um, you know, it, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I knew what happened prior. You know, I didn't take it personal because I've accepted already what it is. Mm -hmm. So that allowed me to cheer my teammates on. How would you describe your relationship with Jason Tatum? Uh, me and him have a championship level relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think that together we've been here for a long time and we've had to listen to any and everything for the longest. Um, that we couldn't play together, that things should be broken up. We wasn't leaders and we were close every single year, like right there, right there, right there, every single year. And we viewed it as like, just stay the course while everybody else viewed it as blow it up. Mm -hmm. And we got the receipts, um, but the Six way- Six conference finals appearances for you, five conference finals appearances for him, two NBA finals appearances for you both, and now a championship. Absolutely. I mean, before, I mean that, that says itself, that says in itself, but you know that wasn't the rhetoric. You know, going into the playoffs this year, that wasn't the rhetoric going into the season last year. But obviously, that rhetoric has changed. But I'm one thing about it is going to change again. That's going to be some point again if it's not working or whatever is not. We win or lose a couple games in a row, it'll be back. Mm -hmm. The the commentators, everything will be back, and that's just a normal cycle of everything. And you right. got to embrace that as well. Right. Yeah. So I uh, I understand how things work, and I. And Jason, we've been able to, to build a bond. We've been able to create an environment that we wanted to see. And we've been able to grow together as, as human beings, as individuals. And when you win a championship, man, that's special. So considering that bond, and I just got a few more questions before I let you go. Considering that bond, I am appreciative of the greatness of Steve Kerr and how he's a four-time champion, won six NBA finals, all his coaching credentials are not to be questioned. But I looked at that man bench, Jason Tatum, for two games. I saw one game where he reportedly walked up to Jason Tatum before tip-off and told him, I'm going to have a hard time finding minutes for you. I don't understand. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Somebody that plays in the league, that plays with this man as a teammate all of these years, what was that like? And could you fathom any explanation how you, as any coach, can look at a guy like Jason Tatum and say, beforehand, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find minutes for you in a 40-minute contest? No, nah, for sure. I'm biased when we're answering this, by the way, totally. Sure, so, sure. <laughs> um, but Jason, I think he handled it extremely well. Uh, he, you know, that just says a lot about JT's character. Um, but I know he was pissed, No, nah, for sure. I remember texting him. And being like, you know, like I'm like I'm mad for you. 
Like I know what they like. I was I mad get for him. It. Like JT, I know how he carries himself and how you know what I mean. So I know, I know like that feeling. Um, but I thought he handled it well. I thought he handled it with class. If anything, I know how. How would you have handled it? I would have handled it probably the same way. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, no different. Um, I think that's just you know our character kind of exudes outwardly what we who are who we are in, inwardly. And JT, even though I know he probably felt that internally and that feeling, like he was able to control his emotions and, mm -hmm. and still handle business, and he'll add to winning and be a part of a great group that won his second gold medal. Mm -hmm. And now it's an afterthought. The brothers are first team all NBA over the last three years. He just finished averaging nearly 27 points per game. And even you, with your greatness, plays the role of a number two offensive option a lot of times because obviously he's the number one option in most situations. What can we expect from him this year based off of what he experienced this past summer? First, I would say, you know, I hate the, the number one, number two option. Okay. Okay. Thing. I think this game is is played at any at any given point. I'm the number one, you know, depending on the night, or he's the number one, depending on it. Just okay. Depending on how the defense is scheming, mm -hmm. depending on how teams go about, you know. Well, what I would say in response to that is yeah. that is totally accurate. We're you and Jason Tatum, but most teams there's a clear number okay. one and a number two option, okay. but that doesn't exist on Boston because of you, because gotcha. you and Jason Tatum right there. That's what I would say. Yeah, but I, I think it's a team game, man. I, I think our organization, our coaches, and our teammates allow us to be who we are. And I think Joe does a great job of putting us in our spot. So Joe Mazzulla's done a hell of a job. Yeah, man. It's 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 been great to be a part of it. Like I've I've got to 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 witness a lot of JT's growth. He's got to witness my growth, and and it's nothing wrong with being a part of a team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with you know, trying to do something bigger than yourself and playing a role in that. I've never had an issue with that. Was well, good. I do. I do like the fact that they was able to have this conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, because a lot of the times when media and player have a misunderstanding, you know, it'd be like cheap shots or whatever. They don't never really just sit down. You know, two grown men just sit down and have a conversation. You know what I mean? And Jalen kind of understood how, you know, the journalist thing, you can't get your sources, you know, blase squeak. So, you know, I'm happy they was able to hash it out and not, not let it become nothing that they really had to hash out, really. And I like how I feel like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are the perfect personalities for a 1A, 1B type of, of team because they don't let – None of the media or no outside noise affect them as far as their relationship. They don't get jealous. They don't play selfish. They play the game the right way. Whoever night it is, like, like Jalen said, whoever night it is, that's who night it is. So, you know, I feel like it was a good interview, good information. So I hope Boston keep doing their thing, man. See y'all on the next one.